all day and sleeps all night. We're catching Panamania at the Metro Toronto Zoo. Come see Jinjin and Chuan Chuan and you. all died in China and the pandas starving there. So China asked us for our help to keep them all alive. To help to catch and feed them so the panda can survive. next week right from the start of the journey to Toronto. There's plenty of activity around here now, but there's only one word that will describe the scene on the big day when the visitors finally arrive, pandemonium. Glenn Cochran, CFTO News, at the Metro Toronto Zoo. Gail Smith, CFTO News, with Ching Ching and Chuen Chuen, 31,000 feet above the Pacific. The zoo's admission fee is going up during their stay, and the money will go to the Chinese Wildlife Conservation Association and its fight to save the panda. Kathy Robinson, CBC News, Pearson International Airport. The arrival of the rare giant pandas from China seems well worth a 10-year campaign to bring the bears to Canada. Jacques Bourbeau reports. We have two reports this evening, one from CFTO's Tim Weber and another from CFTO's Gail Smith, who traveled to Hong Kong to pick up the endangered animals. Their names are Chun Chun and Ching Ching, and they arrived on CP Air's Orient Express last night from China. Nancy Ng was on board the flight. To steal the hearts of Canadians. Tonight, why pandas make good ambassadors. Two rare giant pandas are resting at the Metropolitan Toronto Zoo, exhausted after a 20-hour flight from China and a blitz of media attention. Ching Ching and Chuan Chuan are on loan from the Chinese government. They'll be here for three months. There, they do not sign autographs. They spend most of their time sleeping and eating. But they are stars nonetheless. Ching Ching and Chuan Chuan are the first panda bears ever to visit Canada. This morning, we're joined by Ron Barbaro, chairman of the Metro Toronto Zoo. He's and Roskowski for City Pulse. By the way, the price of admission to the Metro Zoo for adults and students was increased for the panda's 100-day visit. Part of the money raised will be forwarded to the Chinese Wildlife Association. That organization is trying to save pandas from extinction and has built a special sanctuary for the animals in China. The zoo decided to invite children from the Variety Villages summer camp for disabled children two days before the rest of the public will be allowed in. Sheila Manis reports. The children. And so for the next 100 days, these pandas will get top billing. The other zoo animals will just have to sit back and bear it. Avis Favreau, Global News. We're talking pandas, of course, and they put on a great show for the cameras this afternoon. CFTO's Rosemary Perrette visited the playful pair with CFTO cameraman Rob Mulligan. Meet Chuan Chuan and Ching Ching. They were just plain happy to see each other this afternoon. The two pandas were kept apart while they were being prepared for their long journey from China. And while here at the zoo, they have been inside separate bedrooms at the back of their exhibit. Four weeks is too much time for lifelong friends to be separated, so the six-year-old girl and five-year-old boy paid no attention to the wall of cameras and journalists. But after 20 minutes of hard play, the official guardian for the pandas ordered the pair back to their rooms. Edgar Leon said the first meeting in a month has to be handled carefully. It turned into a command performance at the Metro Toronto Zoo today. Two visiting pandas from China were introduced to the media and to some very special children. The media and the children couldn't take their eyes off the young couple. But Jing Jing and Chuan Chuan seem to be more interested in getting to know each other. And so interested, in fact, that even zoo officials were a bit shocked. 
Dan Bjarnason reports. They're the biggest international celebrities to hit Toronto in years. When they flew in Monday night from Hong Kong, they got VIP treatment a film star would envy. And they've stayed front page news ever since. The biggest story in Toronto is the two roly-poly creatures with the sad faces. This was the first time Chuan Chuan and Jing Jing have been together since they left China. It's been a long wait, but this wasn't supposed to be happening. Boy pandas and girl pandas are only supposed to be interested in each other a few days each spring. Chuan Chuan apparently hasn't read the book. He just won't take no for an answer. All this will probably break the hearts of the Americans. It's taken their two pandas a decade to get this far. Dan B. Arneson, CBC News, Toronto. The 7.43 on CBLT Morning. There's a new epidemic sweeping the city. It's panda fever, and Toronto got the bug on Monday when Ching Ching and Quan Quan arrived from China. The two giant pandas are here for 100 days, and their visit is accompanied by a flood of panda fernalia. The Chinese delegation leaves for the United States on Sunday. But Madam Lin says its two goodwill ambassadors will be staying a while longer as a symbol of friendship between the two nations. Patricia Chu, CBC News, Toronto. Visitors to the Metro Toronto Zoo are in for a real treat. There's some VIPs here, very important pandas. Meet Jing Jing and Zhuang Zhuang. Their arrival here for their 100-day stay has caused quite a stir. Pandemania, in fact, is officially opened today by the wife of Chinese President Li Xianyan. Premier David Peterson was also on hand for the special event, but it took a little coaxing before the animals would greet the 100 guests at the zoo. Using some specially prepared panda porridge as encouragement, a Chinese handler persuaded Ching Ching and Chuan Chuan to come out of their cave. Zoo board chairman Ron Barbaro says the Chinese have agreed to let the pandas stay in Canada if they bear any offspring here. The public will be able to see the pandas tomorrow starting at 9 a.m. <laughs> the one thing zoo officials were worried about when they opened the panda exhibit was that, especially on day one, there would be general pandemonium. Well, that hasn't proven to be the case. So far, there is lots of room for everyone, and everyone seems to be having a fantastic time. Larry Jackson, Global News, at the Metro Zoo. CFTO's Jim Junkin has this report. As you'll see in the next few moments, a day in the life of a giant panda is not all that demanding. Today, Chuan Chuan, the five-year-old male, spent a great deal of his time snoozing in a shady spot. The weather promises to be sunny and hot, a great day to come to the zoo. And if you'll pardon the pun, they say it could be pandemonium. Jim Junkin, CFTO News, at the Metro Toronto Zoo. The zoo broke all attendance records during the panda's visit. More than a million and a quarter people passed through the turnstiles during the hundred days. That's three quarters of a million more than in the comparable period in previous years. The other animals had more visitors because the people who came to see the pandas stayed to see their neighbors. Even so, some of the regulars seemed a little miffed by the whole thing. There's no question but that the Metro Toronto Zoo is a great place to visit, but the next time you're here, drop in on Charles the Gorilla. You'll find that, like me, he's not just another pretty face. Glenn Cochran, CFTO News. He's right, you know. Prince Bernhardt of the Netherlands is the founder of the World Wildlife Fund. For 25 years, the prince has traveled the world trying to save its rare inhabitants from extinction. Prince Bernhardt was delighted by the contribution made by the Metro Zoo. It's a wonderful chance for people like you and me and everybody else to have a good look at the animals as they are. They're happy now getting some extra food. The uh, belief in uh, conservation and the conviction that we need conservation for the human race to survive. We don't want to live in asphalt jungles. People seem to associate probably with childhood and growing up. I like the baby ones. I've seen them on TV, but not outside, so close to me. 
like my grandson I've never seen one and I'd like to see one too. Oh, I think it's great. Uh, we thought that they must be really valuable, you know, to be in the passenger section instead of in the cargo section. I like them because they're fuzzy and they're big. They're nice and they look cute and they're so big. Well, it's a, it's a thrill, as, as you can well imagine, that if you have, there's over 300 people associated with this zoo, and Metro Toronto has tried to make it a first-class establishment, and uh, to have the rarest, most loved animal in the world on, on exhibit in your place for a while, it's, it's like the art gallery having the Mona Lisa. It's, it's a marvelous feeling, and everyone here, and I'm excited for everyone who has been involved. I didn't want to go at first, but then everybody else said to me, all right, we're going to have a good time. I didn't know that. All right, all right, I'll go, I'll go. <laughs> all right, you're booking me, but I'll go. <laughs> was it worth it? I don't know it was. Oh, I think they're beautiful. I've never seen one before. Really, really gorgeous animals. Well, I think they're wonderful. I, I've never seen anything that looks so cuddly. Oh, I like them. <laughs> what do you like most about them? Oh, they're sort of unusual. They're white and, and they're black, and they look though they're wearing underwear. Well, I had been wanting to come to see the pandas all summer, and this is the first opportunity I've had. We came from Kingston, Ontario, to see the last day of the pandas. It's quite an event. I'm a school teacher in Kingston, and I didn't get my class up here, so I thought I'd do the best I could to get some pictures myself and take the slides back and show them. Has it been worth it? Yes, yes. Despite the rain, it's been worth it. It's, a... it's only water. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? It's only water. <laughs> I figured it, if I didn't see the nail, I never would, so I'm not going to China, that's for sure. Because <laughs> uh, I want to see the finger bears. Yeah, why? Because uh, I never saw them before. A check for $750,000 was turned over to the Chinese Wildlife Conservation Authority. This helped to strengthen the bond between China and Canada, a bond forged by diplomacy and a very famous Canadian. They have a tremendous respect uh, for Canada and their people uh, that have come over here. They definitely have that respect. They're, they're, they love the Canadians because we recognize them first. And, and you must remember the big thing is Dr. Bethune. There are more people in the world Dr. Bethune, in my opinion, is the most popular Canadian that ever lived because a billion people know who he was. The Chinese have already demonstrated their appreciation. They've agreed to give four lesser red pandas to the Metro Zoo for permanent exhibition. They're first cousins of the giant panda, but not so rare. Will we ever have giant pandas permanently? Ron Barbaro is hopeful. I think that we're extremely high on the priority list uh, because uh, word has come back from me and has been sent through the, uh, the papers from uh, Hong Kong when they arrived and on their way back to Beijing that, uh, that they were treated first class to people and that uh, our method of operation at the Metro Toronto Zoo is first class and uh, they think that our weather is just perfect. So I, I think we're high on the list of priorities. If, if they open up the doors that we feel secure that we can give to a nation a pair of pandas, uh, Canada's right on top. Then, on November the 4th, 110 days after they arrived, Ching Ching and Chuan Chuan were given a diplomatic escort to CP's Orient Express and the long flight home. A flight they spent in true panda fashion, munching on bamboo and acting cute.